jibba jab. Bamboozle, nuka, noozle, pippity pop, she called. You jibba jab. Bamboozle, nuka, noozle, pippity pop, she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn. Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Independent Thinking. You know him, you love him. He's his snappy dresser. He's a, well, he's the man about town. My good friend Dave Kopel, who runs the Second Amendment Project at the Independence Institute. Glad to have you. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so the real reason we're here today is, of course, to pimp this, what, your 38th book in a series of Hardy Boy stories? It is the, the 12th. Uh, and I'm, I'm moving a little bit away from the Hardy Boy Nancy Drew theme in this one. And actually, today, December 4th, is the official publication date. Terrific. And this is Aiming for Liberty, the past, future, future, uh, past present, future of self-defense. Nice. Available from Amazon and barnesandnoble.bn.com. And it's in, in its... 20 dream. bucks. Really? 20 bucks? Yeah, if you buy it online, there are no they'll, pictures in they'll it. give it's you a all, discount. It's all, it's all words. There's nothing, there's nothing there. There's no coupons. There's no CDs. Nothing. Yeah, but maybe your, your seven-year-old Piper can read it to you. That's not a bad idea. I tell you what, before we get in, into the book of, about self-defense and, and the Second Amendment, you've been involved in two remarkably important gun cases that are working its way to the Supreme Court. The first one was, of course, the Heller case and now the Chicago case, which you've uh, also written an amicus brief for. Let's quickly go over the, the Heller case, which was probably the Roe versus Wade of, of the Second Amendment. With the small distinction that actually the right to arms is in the Constitution, whereas the Constitution doesn't say anything about abortion one, one way or the other. But having the Supreme Court weigh in on an issue that they've never really weighed in on, and by a 5-4 to four decision on the Heller case, say that the Constitution means that there's an individual right to keep and bear arms. That's right. The, the Second Amendment is not just for the militia. They in, up, upheld the text of the Constitution, which says it's the right of the people, uh, not the right of the militia uh, to keep and bear arms. All right, so this case in, in Heller was that the District of Columbia uh, had the worst gun control law ever. You couldn't have anything. You couldn't well, have they, a handgun. They banned handguns, and if you had a licensed, registered rifle or shotgun in the home, you couldn't use it for self-defense in the home. Matter of fact, it had to be disassembled, disassembled. It had right? to be an, either locked up or inoperable. And in addition for a handgun, if you, before the, the ban was enacted in, in 1976, you could own a, a grandfathered handgun if you lived in the city continuously and had it registered. Um, even for that gun, if you say had it upstairs in, in your townhouse and wanted to move it to the basement, you couldn't do that because you could only carry the gun if you had a license, even within your own home, and they never gave anybody a license. Good stuff. All right, you wrote an amicus brief. You were there at the Supreme Court chambers. You were one of three attorneys sitting there at the uh, counsel's table. That was a pretty exciting thing. Right. We, I was one of the three who assisted Alan Gura, the, the lead attorney in the, in the oral argument in that case. And as, as you say, the Independence Institute, on, on behalf of a large coalition of law enforcement organizations, uh, did an amicus brief in that case, which, which got cited four times in the court's opin in the, uh, opinions in the case. All right. So when Heller was ruled upon. You know, we all threw a party. We said, look, the Constitution means what it says. There's a right to keep and bear arms. But there were still other cities like Chicago that had asinine, ridiculous handgun bans as, as well. And the question is, does the Heller decision cover other cities like, like Chicago? Exactly. There's a, at the, the day Heller was decided, Chicago and five Chicago suburbs had handgun bans. Four of those suburbs have repealed them. Oak Park is, still has its handgun ban, and of course Chicago still has, has its ban. They're the only uh, cities in the country left with, with, with handgun bans. And the new case that's going to be argued before the Supreme Court in, in early 2010, probably February or March, uh, is called McDonald versus Chicago, and that will decide if the Second Amendment applies to state and local governments. Why wouldn't it apply? I mean, or what, why, does we, why do we need to have a second round of, of this highly publicized, highly anticipated, huge uh, gun case? Didn't Heller decide everything? Well, the Supreme Court in 1833, a case called Barron versus Baltimore, said that the, the Bill of Rights in the federal constitution applies only to the federal government. And that, that would include the District of Columbia City Council, because they get all their powers from, as a delegation from Congress. And so, 
what that meant was that state governments were free to violate people's rights, as they frequently did, censoring abolitionist speech in the South, for example, or after the Civil War, uh, making it illegal for uh, the freedmen uh, to possess guns. Congress enacted a constitutional amendment to correct that problem, the 14th Amendment, um, and the Supreme Court uh, treated that amendment with a great deal of contempt and really nullified parts of it uh, in the late 19th century. And in the 20th century, began a process of sort of slowly uh, complying with, with the Constitution and began saying that we will selectively incorporate some parts of the Federal Bill of Rights into the uh, 14th Amendment and make them because applicable to the states. Uh, put it this way, we understand the, the, the First Amendment. You yeah. can't, the government cannot establish a religion. If the state of Colorado wanted to say that um, uh, Catholicism is now the official language or religion of, of Colorado, that would be blatantly unconstitutional. So was that because of the First Amendment or was that because of the 14th Amendment which, which says That's because all it, these other things apply even to the states? Well, with the First Amendment, we Congress was immediately forbidden from establishing an official national religion. With the 14th Amendment, and the 14th Amendment was again intended to correct this because there had been so much government control and really establishments of religion in, in the South before the Civil War. I mean, saying what kind of biblical texts could be preached, what kind of commentary could be given on them, you know, again, to make sure that they, the Southern ministers did not explore too far or, or talk much about the, the anti slavery human rights uh, passages in the Bible. So, Congress in intended to correct that, but it was not till the middle of the 20th century where the Supreme Court finally enforced that part of the 14th Amendment and said states have to obey the First Amendment as well and cannot establish a religion. So, but it seems consistent that if the states have to abide by the First Amendment, they would have to abide by the Second Amendment. And as the Heller case just decided, that the Second Amendment applies, that government cannot uh, take away your second or your gun rights that the state can't take away your gun rights, not just the feds, but the state. And that's what this Chicago uh, fight is all about. Exactly, that, that's what, what's at issue, and we'll get a definitive ruling, hopefully, from the Supreme Court uh, by the end of the court's term this June. Heller decision was only five to four. I mean, what I thought should have been a slam dunk was a squeaker. What about this? I, I think I'm hopeful for at least five, and also <laughs> hopeful, uh, you know, that, that, that's You're the You're sure key. about that? not sure that I'm hopeful for it. And I, I think the arguments that once you, you say the Second Amendment is a meaningful individual right, once that's established by Heller, then, then is all the tests the Supreme Court has used to say whether a particular individual right also applies to the state and local governments. Uh, the case is, is overwhelmingly strong for the Second Amendment uh, to be applied via the 14th. So we're hopeful uh, that at least some of those four who have previously been on, on the anti-right side of the issue might uh, go with the stronger legal argument. You worked on the Heller case. You've done a brief now for this case. When do you think we'll get a word whether or not uh, states and localities have to uh, recognize Second Amendment rights? Well, the, the Heller decision came down on the very last day of the Supreme Court's term in 2008. Usually that, that's around June 22nd or so. So it, it could be as late as that. Uh, partly because this is, on the one hand, sort of the core issue is, is a simple case, but there are also some, some technical issues about which clause of the, of the uh, 14th Amendment to use, the, the due process clause, which has been what was used throughout the 20th century to make rights enforceable against state and local governments, or the privileges or immunities clause, which the court more or less killed in an 1870 case called the Slaughterhouse Cases. and has now shown some interest in reviving, and so the, the court may take a while to work through what it wants to do with privileges or immunities. 